How's it going, people? And welcome to DNC, Doctrine and Covenants. Now, I haven't really read ahead. I found this at Desiree Industries, and it is uh, on CD. But to be perfectly honest, uh, I couldn't really get into it. <laughs> it's really terrible. But I'm going to do it anyway. And there are some drinks in it. Not many, but some. And I've got to do this. <laughs> so let's get started. We're going to start with uh, this one this one. <laughs> All right. Explanatory introduction. And this has got a 1974 copyright. So, but it, it really goes back to like 18... I guess. All right. Explanatory introduction. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was organized as an institution among men in the sixth day of April, 1830. Through a period of more than six years prior to that date, Joseph Smith, the prophet, uh, had received, at intervals, divine revelations and commandments, basically amendments, to, uh, to this. Uh, of these, the first, and of all, most glorious, was a visitation in which, in answer to the young man's prayer for guidance as to which of the numerous and opposing sects of the day he should join, the Eternal Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, personally manifested themselves and the Father pointing to the Christ thus affirmed the, and commanded this is my beloved son hear him this took place in the early spring of 1820 in September of 1823, and at later times, Joseph Smith received visitations from Moroni, an angel of light, who revealed the resting place of the ancient record, which was a, a record from which the Book of Mormon was afterwards translated. Many revelations followed in preparation for the reestablishment of the Church of Jesus Christ on earth. The real one. This one. Just ask them. All the other guys have got it wrong. They're not just adding one more sect. No, no, no. They're not adding one more babbling voice. They got the real one this time. Unless the Unitarian, you know, unless the uh, Unification guys who came later, maybe they're more pure. I don't know. <sighs> and later, for the, the direction of the church so organized. As early as the summer of 1830, the prophet, acting under divine commandment, 
was engaged in copying and arranging the revelations received up to that time evidently with a view to their publication in book form, we guess. On November 1st, 1831, at a conference of the elders of the church held at Hiram, Ohio, definite action relating to the publication of the Revelations was taken and the compilation was called the Book of Commandments. The Lord's acceptance of the undertaking was made manifest by the giving of, of the revelation herein appearing as Section 1, which is currently known as the Preface. So that's even a divine revelation. Wow. I can't wait. During the conference at Hiro, the elders present uh, the elders present testified individually to their conversion of the divine origin of the revelations and of their willingness to proclaim their testimony to the world. So. Uh, their solemn affirmation was thereupon formulated as follows. As follows. All right. Um, the testimony of the witnesses, and that's all capitalized. It's like they're shouting at us. I get a lot of PMs from but hurt Mormons uh, that have all capitals too. All right, I get it. You're shouting. Okay, I get it. Uh, the many of the witnesses capitalized. Now the rest not. Uh, to the book of the Lord's commandments, which He gave to His church through Joseph Smith Jr., who was appointed by the voice of the church for this purpose. We therefore feel willing to bear testimony to all the world of mankind, to every preacher upon the face of all the earth, and upon the thousands of, and upon the islands of the sea, that the Lord has borne record to our souls through the Holy Ghost. Through the Holy Ghost shed forth upon us that these commandments were given by inspiration of God and are profitable for all men and are verily true. They're profitable to for all men. Wow. We give this testimony unto the world, the Lord being our helper. And it is through the grace of God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, that we are permitted to have this privilege of bearing this testimony under the world that the children of men may be profited thereby. Don't you mean profited from? You get to tap everybody's vein. Two days after the conference at Hiram, the revelation herein appearing as section 133 was received. I can't wait. This was added to the comp compilation and called the appendix. So remember that, everybody. That's going to come in handy later on. An appendix. <laughs> Finally, it's useful. In the book. 
In connection with a record of this edition, the title Doctrine and Covenants first appears as the name of the book. Prior to that time, the manuscript compilation was frequently referred to as the historical records as uh, in the historical records as the book of commandments and covenants and commandments they finally settled on something they know what they're doing damn it in accordance with official action Taken at the conference of the church, the manuscript was sent to Independence, Missouri, then known as Zion. <laughs> Independence, Missouri, then known as Zion, in care of Oliver Cowdery and John Whitmer, who testified in the other book. <laughs> in due course, the printing was begun, and by the early summer of 1833, was nearing completion. But on July 20th, 1833, the printed the printing plant at Independence, together with most of its contents, including all save a few copies of some of the forms of the unfinished book, was destroyed by a mob. Notwithstanding this calamity, the church was undaunted in the mission laid upon it to publish the latter-day revelations of God to mankind. It's for our own good, damn it. On September 24th, 1834, at a meeting of the High Council in Kirkland, Ohio, a committee with Joseph Smith, the prophet and president of the church, at its head, was constituted to publish the revelations and other matter relating to the doctrines of the church. This committee reported the compilation of its labors to a general assembly of the church at Kirkland, Ohio, August 17, 1835. The congregation was seated in the order of solemn assembly, each uh, quorum, each quorum, or distinctive body of the priesthood, being in its place, and the acceptance of the revelations contained in the book of doctrines and covenants was expressed by the separate vote of each Curum, uh, and then by the united voice of the entire assembly, because this is the U.S. of A. We are still a damn democracy. I guess, I hope, I wish. Uh, the testimony of the Twelve Apostles of the Church was formulated, signed, and presented to the assembly in the form following, and we got all caps here, testimony of the Twelve Apostles to the truth of the Book of Doctrine and Covenants. So you got to believe it. It's all in capitals. <laughs> All right, regular, uh, regular uh, font after this. Actually, it looks like uh, it's italicized. All right, the testimony of the witnesses to the book of the Lord's commandments, which 
commands he gave to his church through Joseph Smith, Jr., who was appointed by the voice of the church for this purpose. We, therefore, feel willing to bear testimony to all the world of mankind, to every creature upon the face of all the earth, that the Lord has borne record to our souls through the Holy Ghost shed forth upon us, that these commandments were given by inspiration of God and are profitable for all men and all are verily true. We give this testimony unto the world, the Lord being our helper, like you said before, and it is through the grace of God, the Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, that we are permitted to have this privilege of being, of bearing this testimony unto the world, in the which we rejoice exceedingly, praying the Lord always that the children of men may be profited thereby. Thomas B. March, David W. Patton, wow, we got some new names finally, Brigham Young, it's Briggy, hey Briggy baby, I missed you. <laughs> I'm going to love this, I don't care how dull it is. Heber C. Kimball. Orson Hyde, W.M., I guess that's William, E., M. Le Lellin, wow, they must have crunched his name together to make it fit, uh, Parley P. Pratt, hey, Parley Baby, the wife stealer, the home wrecker, who got killed by a jealous husband, but he's a martyr to God. He just broke a fucking family up, that's all. Luke S. Johnson. William Smith. Probably a relation. Orson Pratt. Definitely a relation. John F. Boyenton. Layman E. Johnson. Insignificant. In successive editions of the Doctrine and Covenants, additional revelations, or other matters of record have been added as received. Huh. How convenient. Whatever comes to mind at the moment, I guess. And as accepted by competent assemblies or conferences of the church. Certain lessons entitled Lectures on Faith, which are bound in with the Doctrine and Covenants, and some of its former issues are not included in this edition. Damn it! All right, that's fine. These lessons are prepared for use in the school of the elders, so it's sequestered information. I see. I can deal with that. I got a Mormon thrift store down the street. I think I've seen that shit. It's cheap and vintage. <laughs> Conducted in Kirkland, Ohio, that brainwashing camp, during the winter of 1834 through 35. Wow. But they were never presented to, nor accepted by the church as being otherwise than theological lectures or lessons. Uh, see Church History, Volume 2, Chapter 18. 
so it's probably here anyway. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. All right, then it's all chronological order. See? Uh, and uh, what else is there? Oh, they tell you what the abbreviations are. That's nice. And we start Doctrine and Covenants. So, I'll be doing this from time to time on my new channel to make it different than the old one. So I can get away with that shit, I hope. I hope you'll stay tuned. It's boring as shit, but it's kind of interesting too. And believe me, I'll do my best to liven it up somehow. So, peace. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having, because, damn it, I really care.